Hey, Dr. Haggerty, we're looking for a foreign body in this finger, but we're making a mess with the gel. We really can't see it well enough. Can you help? Absolutely. Have you ever thought about using a water bath? It's a powerful tool that allows you to get high resolution images of small things such as fingers, toes, and hands. Even better, because you're not touching the patient, it doesn't cause them any pain. Let me show you how it works. Dan is having the machine positioned in his direct line of sight so he does not have to turn his head while he's performing the procedure. A linear high frequency transducer is optimal for scanning the finger. Inspect the transducer to make sure the casing is not cracked before you put it into the water bath. The transducer can be submerged in the water bath, but do not get the junction of the cord and the transducer wet as this area is not watertight. The key principle is to keep the ultrasound transducer about one to two centimeters from the finger, as is illustrated here, out of the water. Dr. Haggerty is now lowering the hand and the ultrasound transducer into the water. And on the ultrasound screen, you can see the nice black sonographic window created by our water bath. The transducer indicator is placed towards the patient's head so that the fingertip is seen on the right side of the screen. Looking at the palmar aspect of the finger, the skin and subcutaneous tissue is seen at the top of the screen and then the flexor tendon. Deep to the tendon are the palmar aspects of the bones and the DIP and PIP joints. On the left side of the screen is a normal fingertip. On the right side of the screen, you can see a fingertip with a fluid collection deep within the subcutaneous tissues. This is a felon. Now, looking at these two still images, the one on the left side of the screen shows a normal flexor tendon without any fluid around it. The one on the right side of the screen demonstrates the tendon surrounded by anechoic or black fluid at the arrows. This is an example of flexor tenosynovitis. Going back to our finger in the water bath, as you recall, we couldn't see beyond the bones because of the heavy shadowing. So if we want to see the structures in the dorsal aspect of the hand, we have to rotate it in the water bath and reposition the transducer. The nail is identified near the tip of the finger. Scanning proximally, first the DIP and then the PIP joints are seen with the extensor tendon running as a thin white line across the bones. Scanning more proximally, the MCP joint is visible. On the left side of the screen is a normal MCP joint with the extensor tendon sliding across the joint. On the right side of the screen is an extensor tendon sliding across the MCP joint with an impaled foreign body. Back to our finger in the water bath. To inspect it in short axis, turn the transducer so that the indicator is towards the patient's right and the right side of the finger is on the left side of the screen. To make sure the orientation is correct, put your finger into the water on the indicator side of the transducer and watch it appear on the left side of the screen. Scanning up and down the finger, in short axis, the tendons appear as fibrous bundles just above the bright white bone. As we've seen, the water bath is a powerful tool to help us obtain high resolution images of small parts such as the hand or the finger. In addition, patients benefit from minimal discomfort. Keys to remember are probe orientation as well as adequate spacing between the probe and the finger and looking for opportunities to use this powerful technique.